Hello, this is Yashish Dahiya. I run a company called PolicyBazaar.com. We are an insurance comparison site, and we also have a company called PesaBazaar.com, which is a loans comparison site. And hello, this is Karthik Malhotra, and of course, Yashish Dahiya joining us on this cast. Yashish Dahiya, thank you so much for joining us. These are difficult times for everybody, every citizen of the country, every policy maker, every business person. But for the insurance sector, are times a little more difficult? than what are anticipated in the worst case scenario also i think uh, the need for insurance is uh, felt by the consumers uh, so there is a clear need for health insurance and life insurance uh, it will be very difficult for anybody in the middle class to be able to uh, support costs of healthcare uh, in this in any situation let alone this but this reminds us more about those costs uh but at the same time at this point there are more pressing matters like you know the milk uh the eggs the basic uh food and essentials so i think uh, it is it is a difficult uh, time to get the consumers mindset on insurance i think the second part is fulfillment is a lot more difficult so while uh, someone like us has worked with a lot of insurance companies to ensure uh, uh, telemedicals so basically medicals happen over the phone uh but otherwise uh it's almost impossible to execute a physical medical test at this point and the simple reason for that is uh, i don't think uh, uh people want to go to a hospital to get a medical test done to buy insurance uh and the more the elderly as well as the uh, people who have a pre existing disease are the ones that require medical tests and uh, clearly those are the more vulnerable uh you know parts of society right now so they would not like to go out for medicals second part is for people living in societies i don't think even for home medicals uh, people are allowing uh, uh, medical practitioners to come in to take uh, tests you know phlebotomists to come in and do tests so i think that part becomes difficult so yashish thaya i think a question that is bothering a lot of people today is that is my health insurance and my life insurance valid at a time of a pandemic like the covid 19 at this point the regulator has clarified that uh, health insurance companies are uh, uh, requested to honor covid claims so at this point yes and i think that's the relevant part right for india right now uh, covid claims are being accepted uh, by all health insurance companies all right but historically do you think insurance providers have factored in something like a pandemic to build policies and all our claims is that part of the risk assessment uh, as a part of a macro risk assessment yes they do think about uh, you know various negative events that could happen in time and uh, over uh, the last 30 40 years may have happened at different times but these are extraordinary times and uh, uh, it is just the sheer volume of claims that they may not have factored for yet so far the number of claims is not very high but uh, if the claims get out of hand then of course see eventually it's a commercial sector right in the eventually uh money has to come from somewhere and uh eventually if that money isn't there it is just isn't there but right now that doesn't seem to be the risk the regulator has got uh, uh it has got a watch on this situation and at this point uh, the companies are being very supportive are insurance companies also insured in their own right so if the number goes out of hand and the insurance companies go bust uh does my insurance policy lapse do i not get what is due to me no no so that is uh, impossible in the indian context uh because you have a regulator uh, who makes sure that the insurance companies are sufficiently capitalized at all times at all times um and i want to stress on that all times uh in addition to that they have reinsurance uh companies so the you know there's a gic re as well as the international reinsurance companies that are insuring the companies uh yeah i do not uh, see that as uh, as a problem as of now or you know something that the regulator obviously keeps a much stronger watch than any of us can it's the regulator's responsibility to make sure that the companies are sufficiently funded to honor claims but globally do you feel that the whole risk assessment practice is going to undergo a paradigm shift given a large scale situation like a pandemic of the covid 19 do you think insurance companies would need to reassess their strategies and their risk mitigation practices it may not be a covid it may be something else but these kind of risks whether it's large floods etc etc keep happening around the world and insurance companies and actually specialize at this 
so they obviously cannot factor in that it will happen this particular year or at this particular moment in this particular place but eventually factors like this have been taken into account uh, by actuaries over see the actuarial science is a is more than a 100 year old science and right. uh, over the last 100 years there have been multiple events while this might be one of the largest but there have been multiple events and so there is always some factorization for this and that is precisely why extra money is kept by insurance companies uh, which uh, you know we we call solvency ratios etc it's not just your premium that is with the insurance company in addition to your premium the insurance company keeps maybe two to three times that amount of money to pay out all the claims so uh, i think the insurance industry is fairly thought thought through uh, if before the insurance co- industry collapses a lot else will collapse so i think uh, we wouldn't need to uh, worry about the insurance industry collapsing uh, yeah i think i think by that time the situation will be very different and let's talk about auto insurance for a moment uh, the auto industry in the country has anyway been in doldrums for a fairly long time pandemic pandemic notwithstanding um that sector would totally from an insurance point of view be under a lot of stress at the moment is that not right that that would be accurate uh, see renewals are happening but the volumes are down people are have their cars in their you know garages or their basements uh, they not drive and uh, at this point people are feeling they don't really need to you know we we are seeing it right so the sales of motor insurance are somewhat down because people especially two wheelers people are saying okay so i needed this if i was traveling if somebody catches me but i'm not traveling so why get the insurance i'll get it one month later or two months later or three months later we're seeing we're seeing a lot of that behavior all right so what seems to be the biggest challenge that your sector is facing right now given the pandemic and if things were to improve given the measures that the government has taken uh, and is in the process of taking and continuing to take if things were to improve let's say by the end of the first quarter perhaps mid second quarter when do we see some light at the end of the tunnel for the insurance sector see so i can't speak about the sector as a whole uh, but i'll make two statements one is whenever pandemics have happened across the world there has be they have been followed by a period of hyper growth uh so i think everybody just needs to hold their horses and let this pass and this is historical whether it's world wars whether it's pandemics whether it's large scale whatever event has happened negatively after that that's followed by a period of uh, unprecedented growth so you should see i would say if you looked at 2011 2021 onwards uh you might see a period of 2 to 3 years of hyper growth in india now uh coming to our specific situation i can just share with you that our march numbers uh were higher than we had planned before the covid situation attacked you saw uh, so what we are seeing people going and people. buying insurance yeah yeah of course so we are we have seen almost 40% uh, higher uh, uh revenues than plan on the policy bazaar side paisa bazaar has been uh, in a difficult spot because clearly lending seems to have gone out of the window but uh, the policy was our side the insurance side is holding up pretty well uh, what we are seeing is fewer customers are coming but those who are coming are more serious so the conversion rates are very high and uh, now of course people are not going to go to banks right now to buy insurance so i think during the lockdown phase you will see a lot of reduction in uh, offline sales uh, because you're not likely to call somebody to your house to purchase insurance right that's uh, a pretty dramatic thing to do uh so i think the offline sales will and that's why you're seeing a bit of a push towards the online side our paradigms will change for example work from home right none of us believed we could all work from home but now we are and here we and are things are continuing <laughs> yeah and things are continuing and you know the world hasn't so i would uh, so i would really expect uh, real estate costs to come down because uh, people don't need those offices as much and they suddenly realize they don't Are you realizing that as an entrepreneur as a CEO are you realizing the fact that you perhaps don't need a physical office anymore So I can assure you that uh, we occupied 14 buildings and uh, I can assure you uh, we would always have at least 30 to 50% of our staff working from home and that has nothing to do with covid and we could not have done it if covid had not happened 
So are you going to cut down on real estate expenditures in your PNL? Of course, 100%. And what do you think about jobs in the insurance sector? If the sector is going to be hit that hard, are jobs going to be a threat? I don't want to comment too much on it, but I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm more worried about the non-salaried class than about the salaried class. Because yes, there will be job losses. There's no doubt about it. Uh, because uh, companies, if their revenues shrink in the short term, companies don't have the ability to carry those costs forever. Uh, so clearly there will be job losses, but I'm, my heart really goes out to those who don't have a job uh, and who were working on, uh, you know, part-time or uh, uh, daily wages, or uh, I, think, I think that's the part uh, that is going to be, you know, really hit hard. Uh, I think uh, people will also need, realize uh, once again, the need for savings, uh, because I think somewhere uh, that concept that you need to have, you know, money for a, for a, for a lean period uh, with the whole credit culture was somewhat reducing a bit. I think people will realize the need that look, these events happen and these events don't come. They don't tell you before they happen. So it's always good to have maybe three months to a year's uh, things so that you don't have to rely on the salary uh, in case, uh, you know, things turn uh, nasty. Uh, I don't think, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think there will be uh, a tough time for, uh, for many people. There's no doubt about it. And let's hope tough times don't last, but tough people do. Ashish Thayya, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. Thank you.